Welcome to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Now you guys, we're gonna be attempting to do something today that many believe is impossible in this game. When you go to the new Legacy faction, you're gonna see two units that cost, it says 9999999, but in all actuality, it's infinity money. When we put down the Super Peasant, look at the amount of money that's generating over here in the bottom right. It, it just keeps fluctuating. It, it almost looks like a line of code from the movie The Matrix. You don't see 99999. It's just, it doesn't stop. And it's, it seems infinite. The Dark Peasant, much the same. So do they have a price attributed to them or are they just literally infinite money and you can only play them, at least when it's not a tabs mod, in the sandbox mode. Now the Dark Peasant here, he's really, really good at blocking projectiles and we made a video on him a little bit ago on, you know, how or what can kill the Dark Peasant. And it just doesn't seem like much because you can see here, you put some of the most advanced weaponry created on the battlefield of tabs and even still those ex incredibly explosive shells can't do anything to him he made such quick work of this and the super peasant oh my gosh the super peasant seems like he just dominates it even more he'll fly around and just smash them he's just superman he's pretty much superman in tabs look at that he did it in even quicker fashion than the dark peasant did so since we've already tried to destroy the dark peasant i feel like i have a strategy in mind but in order to do that we need to challenge the super peasant to fight some of the greatest gods and deities and champions that are in Totally Active Battle Simulator. Because right there, even the mighty Thor with his Mjolnir armor and apparently some Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 cloning vats to clone himself didn't do anything to him. And even when you take one of the wisest and coolest characters of all time, Gandalf, or in tabs, the wizard, who's able to fire lightning bolt, which usually freezes an enemy in place to kill them, even they can't stop him. We need a unit that has the ability to keep the super peasant in place. Now, one of the first things you think is, oh, well, I'm just gonna use the harpooner, right? Well, the issue with that is the dark peasant moves so, or excuse me, the super peasant moves so fast, because he's effectively Superman, that the grappling hooks never seem to actually make contact with him, and when they do, they're in such small quantities, they can't keep him contained. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this. The grappling hooks, you'll, you'll see them, like, start glitching out because A, we're using too many of them, and B, they, they, they're not able to hit their target. He, it's, he's like Sonic the Hedgehog, in a way. And remember when there was a Sonic the Hedgehog mod back, back in the day? I tell you what, I've got a mod coming out for this weekend that I'm very excited to share with you guys. So make sure to hit the bell button. If you're new, subscribe, because it's gonna be good. So even the grappling hook doesn't work. And you can try conventional weaponry, like bows and arrows, but like, if you thought harpoons are gonna have a chance, well, arrows have even less. Now let's just take a look and see if even one arrow has seemed to make contact with the super peasant. Not one arrow is sticking into him at all, right? So maybe what we could try is clearly, if we're gonna be dealing with a unit that has superpowers, we need to find a unit that can make the average Joe Schmo Archer here have superpowers, or at least <laughs> be a little bit better. Now poachers can fire faster, so we'll put some of them in here too. But what we really, really need here is we need to go to the secret units and we need to go down here to the cheerleaders. And we're gonna make an extra ring of cheerleaders. You may be like, Baron, that is just so many units and so many dollars. Yeah, this is actually $54,560, 210 units. But the super peasant's infinite. So now it just seems like it's still heavily skewed in the super peasant's favor on a monetary basis because he has no actual quantifiable price. Nine, 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 nine. It's infinite. So the cheerleaders here are hopefully going to increase the fire rate. Now check this out. We're trying to pause here because I need a slow motion. I need to capture him because I want to show you something. Look at this. We've already made a bit of an improvement here. And that improvement is we've hit the super peasant with an arrow. Now we're gonna select him real quick just to show you how marginal damage actually was done. You see that? You see that little, okay, he's starting to get hit here. So if he's frozen in place, he's able to take damage, right? Okay, so we have a way to make our average units 
have, well, above average. I wouldn't, I, would, I don't want to say superpowers, but I guess if you think about it, Hawkeye is just like a dude with a bow and arrow who's really good at hitting targets, right? So, you know, is he a superhero? Yes, in a way, because he's got heart and a bow and arrow that he can hit almost anything. But I'm wondering if there's other bows and arrows we could apply the same method to. Maybe the Chuko News. So we're gonna pause this battle and clear the Red Army. And no, I'm not talking about the Soviets. So what we're gonna wanna do is go on over to the Dynasty. And I'm thinking Hawatches, maybe fireworks. If we can hit with some fireworks, it might be able to cause the Super Peasant to fly off of the map, which would kill him. So it does count. It wouldn't be exactly like the best because it's kind of like a kill by technicality, a victory by a TKO, and we ultimately want a knockout. So we've got a bunch of firework archers and a bunch of cheerleaders. Oh my God, there's gonna be, this is this is gonna cause so much lag. Uh, Look at that. He's flying and about 10 to 20 feet behind him is usually where the firework arrows seem to hit. So everything's gonna start exploding in a second, maybe even my computer, and it's gonna be very difficult to see. But, okay, look at that. Let's pause real quick. The cheerleaders seem to be the key element here because that was the super peasant with two firework arrows in his body. So we went from one arrow, oh, now we've got three. Now there are two of them. Plus one. But what we need to see is the firework arrows actually push the super peasant in a different direction. But I, I don't think he's affected by it. And as a result, he's just gonna walk through this battlefield. And you can just follow the traces of gold that emanate from him as he literally destroys and dispatches everybody. But let's go ahead and check his health to see how much damage he actually took here. All right, I choose you, Pikachu. Literally almost nothing. So that didn't work either. Now, one of the things that can do a lot of damage is a ballista. We could give it a go, but I'm thinking we're gonna try some Chuko News with a ring of cheerleaders and then some ballistas in the back that are all gonna be accompanied by cheerleaders as well. Now, I'm not saying this doesn't look like it's gonna do too well, but you never know. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott said that, quoting somebody else. So let's see if, oh my God, these ballistas are just going everywhere. Ballista bolts are gonna be flying all around the map and they're gonna be going through multiple units and taking out other ballistas. So m ballistas are just simply incapable of tracking the super peasant. Hold on, what is going on? Did we do it? The super peasant is flying. My frames are not doing too well. Oh my God, we did it. We've achieved a technical knockout. Now we actually have to go for the knockout. So this is a major victory. Killing the super peasant is no small feat. It took no small army. Now what we want to do though is test these results. Is this combination what is required because we had quite a bit of units as you can see. It's almost 300 soldiers on the battlefield. So it seemed like what he did was he grabbed a unit and flew off with him. I'm not entirely sure why because normally he'll just just followed the battle line, but in this battlefield, he's definitely doing a lot more. Is he being hit? Oh, here we go, see? So we're gonna see, was it just a little bit of blind luck? Is that strategy? <laughs> hey, throw a lot of units at the super peasant and hope you win. Is that a real strategy or did we just get lucky in our TKO? Honestly, it looks like we just got lucky. Dude, but I'm seeing a machine gun ballista, like look at this, he's firing even though he can't hit him. <laughs> It's like old school anti-aircraft guns, man. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's the last of them. And let's go ahead and test him out. See his health. He does have a Chuko New Bolt. He, he's taking a bit of damage. Okay. So that won't do it either. We need to try something different. So we're going to clear the battlefield here. But I think we're on to something here with the recipe of the cheerleader. The cheerleader does it. We just need a different kind of munition. Hold the phone. The Cupid. I think the Cupid. The Cupid makes the unit love himself or love another unit, but there's only gonna be one unit on the battlefield and that's the super peasant. So what happens when the Cupid is able to hit him? The Cupid has not landed one arrow yet. None of these Cupids have. So clearly, I think the Cupids, oh, Look at that, no way. The Cupid is making the Super Peasant stop in place. And now, is the Cupid doing damage? We got some nice jazzy music here. Let's go ahead and click the Super Peasant to see if he is in fact taking damage. He is, oh wow. So do you see that? He's slowly but surely taking damage. Now there is one way we can accelerate this. 
Knowing what we know, and yes, I think that would have achieved victory had we let it go on. We're going to get a ring of cheerleaders to make the cupids fire all the faster. Now we need a lot of them to survive here. Most of the cheerleaders seem to be dead, but all what needs to happen is one arrow, I think. Once he gets hit with one arrow, I think that's when he stays in place. He he has no arrow in like stuck at him yet, so that's probably why he's still flying around. Oh, wow. We had it! Oh my gosh, I think we had it and we lost it simply because I wanted to put some, some cheerleaders in here. Okay, how many cheerleaders do we have left? Three. And the super peasant is over here loving on a tree stump. Oh my! <laughs> We walked in on something a little bit strange, and now he's just getting spittooned. But guys, who would have thought that to beat basically Ares, the god of war in Totally Aggro Battle Simulator, because he is the best unit, it would take not war, but love. And remember, all is fair in love and war. And this is how we did it. Look at that. It's like a family photo here. Everybody smile for the camera. You guys are literally making history. And yes, you too, cheerleaders. We're proud of you. Look at all of your follow, your fellow brethren dead on the battlefield. And you three have survived to cheer on. Because eventually, slowly, but surely, our super peasant friend here is going to be destroyed. Oh, he's getting up. He's actually getting up. I think what we need to do is find a unit that does damage. I know, I know, we have him on the ropes, I know. And you guys are like, Karen, no! But it must be done. It must be done for science. I'm gonna add some Chuko news on the outer periphery and cheerleaders. Remember, yeah, we only had to spend 109,000, but when you look at the legacy units, they cost well over that. So this is far more than fair to destroy the super peasant. I mean, it makes you wonder, you know, like when you see like someone like Superman, you're like, if Superman was real, how could you kill him? You know, how would you get that done? L do you just keep shooting him for infinity? Like what, what goes on? Oh, look at this. Okay, the Cupids have spittooned him right here and you can see that the Chuko News crossbow bolts are just turning this man into a porcupine. And that, let's see, if he's staying still, then I think it's fair enough to hit, to take control of him. Oh, wow. He's losing considerably more health this way now that we've added a more damage dealing unit. So the Chuko News crossbow bolts are significantly and more expeditiously taking out the Super Peasant's health. And as a result, my friends, and even pushing him back, which I don't know if that's dangerous or not. Because you could, in theory, push him behind something, oh, that, I don't know, would block most of the heart arrows. Wow, they're, they're literally pushing against the rock. That's how you do it. I guess Superman, you shoot... <laughs> I don't know. I guess he could break through the rock, though. I don't know. You, you probably can't kill Superman, but sure seems like you can destroy the Super Peasant. It would be kind of fun to try this with some harpoons as well to stick him in place, but, my friends, Team Blue was the Super Peasant, and Team Red, well... They say it takes a village, and it took a village indeed. We'll take a screenshot of that. We'll mount it on our walls because we have achieved a glorious victory against the impossible. Now, real quick, just for fun, let's go ahead and try it against the Dark Peasant because I'm actually not sure if he can die to ranged shots. So this should be pretty interesting to see if this strategy is just a one-all, takes all, and, and can kill anything, but I don't think so because the Dark Peasant, nothing can hit him with range, right? So I don't expect this to actually win. And we would need to find something else, which normally if you put the Super Peasant and the Dark Peasant against each other, Super Peasant destroys Dark Peasant. So they may both cost infinity, but in a 1v1, well, let's just say the Dark Peasant wouldn't want to find the Super Peasant in a game of Rust. <laughs> it's a dank meme, but it does check out. So clear to see that with most of the units destroyed, the Dark Peasant were running riot. It's interesting, we have a rock, paper, scissors mechanic, right? That kills the Super Peasant, but not the Dark Peasant. And once again, for educational purposes, Super Peasant versus Dark Peasant, they have literally the most epic clash of all time, but ultimately, whoa, whoa. Hold the phone. Blue victory defeated the red team. Who is blue? The dark peasant just destroyed super peasant? Is the dark peasant the best unit now? Uh, red victory defeated the blue team. Now, okay, it's 1v1s. We're gonna leave that as a tie. So I didn't know the dark peasant actually could. He was pushed under the map. So anyway, thank you for watching another episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. If you have challenges that you want me to do or kind of a Mythbusters sort of thing with tabs, let me know in the comments. Pull the trigger on the like button, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.